Alright, this is for activity two of, or sorry, unit two, activity one. And this is introducing one of the things from your reading, a capacitor. So that's what this object with the C is. So we're going to set up these two circuits, circuit A and circuit B. When we set up circuit A, we're going to make sure that our capacitor is reset, meaning that we've touched both of those top pieces with some metal. Okay? So predict whether or not both of these setups will create light in the bulbs or not. And then we will actually do it. So get those predictions down, and I'm just going to explain what a capacitor is a little bit. So if you remember this metal piece, all right, this is how we tested aluminum in activity two of unit one. We were testing conductors and insulators. All right, so a capacitor is set up kind of like this. You've got a conductor on one side, aluminum, conductor on the other side, but then you have wax paper or some sort of insulator in the middle. Okay, and then what happens is this gets rolled up. You use something more like foil so that you can actually roll it up and then place it inside the capacitor. Okay, and then one of these is connected to the front conductor and then the other one's connected to the back conductor. So think about that setup. Should this make a closed circuit? Okay. So getting to the observations for the lab, I have a circuit set up right now, and just to show that we do have a functioning circuit, there's the lights. This is always something you want to do because if you don't have lights going, then you're always going to get no lighting, and it, that might not match what you're supposed to get. All right. I'm also going to do what the directions say. I'm going to reset the capacitor. You do that by touching something metallic to the top of both of the... Some of them have little screws on them. This one, the screws are missing, but it still works as long as you kind of stick it inside. Okay. And then we're going to set up circuit A. Circuit A must not include the batteries, so I'm going to unhook those and just put these two alligator clips together so that we do still have a closed loop. And then I'm going to include the capacitor. And you can see that there is no lighting. Okay, so you can make that as your observation. And then we're going to go straight from circuit A to circuit B. So that's going to include the batteries, so watch the light bulbs. You notice there is lighting, but it dims and goes out. All right. So you're supposed to repeat that process a couple of times. If you, as long as you do it correctly and reset the capacitor every time, you get the same results. Bulbs with the capacitor, there is no lighting. Battery causes brief lighting. However, if you break the rules a little bit and you forget to reset the capacitor before going back to loop A, and this is something that I had all the kids do at one point, you notice something different. All right, so this time we have the capacitor. It just had batteries in there, all right, and we did get some brief lighting. Now instead of resetting it, I'm going to connect the alligator clips. You notice you get that brief lighting again. So what's happening here is you plug in the capacitor and you charge it. You unplug the capacitor and you discharge it. So think about how the makeup of the capacitor, how it's set up as far as the insulator and the middle and the two plates, might be causing this to happen. Okay? So that's activity one. Have a summary with you and you can turn that in with your packet and then get the consensus from another friend, or you can come in, ask me, uh, probe me with some, you know, I can ask you some questions and stuff like that, and then I'll stamp it and give you the consensus in terms. All right? See you in class.